Hey guys, I'm Kane on 47 aka Wolf Kane, and we're back for more Dark Souls 2. Last time we played Dark Souls 2, we just finished going through things betwixt. I didn't go through it all because I didn't really care for the tutorial. And now we're here in Majula, which is basically the hub world for this game. Now we're gonna do a bit of exploring around Majula, like I did with the Nexus in Dark Soul and Demon Souls. Because there is quite a lot to see in Majula. There's actually quite a few items to find, there's quite a few people to see. There's actually quite a few things we can get into while we're here before we actually start going out adventuring. The first one is supposed to be up here, which a lot of people have started calling him, like, you know, Crespro. So, let's talk to him. You're undead, aren't you? You have that distinct scent, the smell of irreversible fate. This is Majula. It is a kind of settlement. A place where life is almost normal. And in Drang Lake these days, there are very few places like that. Alright, we can talk to him some more. I am Solden. And like you, I lost everything. And now I'm here. You probably heard that it was possible to break the curse here. Well, that's not true at all. There's nothing here for you, me, or anybody. <laughs> Cheery guy, isn't he? Do you know much about souls? Even I'm not certain, but... I'm told that the soul is the essence of life itself. Anything living, sentient or no, supposedly has one. What we call the curse is traceable to the soul. Do you see what that means? To be alive, to walk this earth. That's the real curse, right there. We undead will never die apparently considering and that's quite a predicament really oh yeah guys i just want to show you this look at this freaking view i don't care what anybody says about the graphical decrease of uh Dar of dark souls 2 this view is amazing and the one thing i like is that all of these areas you could see you can go to like you see that place right over there with the long bridge you can go to it you see that area in the ocean that has like a weird amount of buildings? You can go to it. And you see that area all the way over there? I believe you can go to it. It's insane that you can see all this stuff in like the blink of an eye, basically. Let's talk to him some more. There are four beings in this land with giant souls. And wherever you go from here, you'll sooner or later come up against them. Each has a powerful soul, and a terrible curse. If that frightens you, then you ought to just give up right now. Like I have. <laughs> Sorry to say, but I ain't giving up. Do you ever cry out for help? Sometimes, yes. The journey of an undead is long and treacherous. You'll face invaders from other worlds at every turn. If you need help, why not proclaim faith in the Blue Sentinels? When you face danger, the Blue Sentinels will come to your aid. Protection is yours, if you wish. You need only accept their kind embrace. So basically, this is a covenant that you can join. The Way of Blue basically puts you in this covenant where if you get invaded, a co uh, another covenant called the Blue Sentinels will basically send a player to help you out in your world. The job of a Blue Sentinel is to basically protect players from the Way in Blue. So basically, if I got invaded by a red player, a blue player could come into my world and help me out. And if he kills the invader, I get safe and he goes back home. I'm going to join this covenant mainly because um, I want the ring that you get afterwards. 
And as you can see, the marker next to my health has also changed. That marks your covenant. That is a wise decision. People are weak, but the blue sentinels watch over us in their benevolence. Let the sentinels cradle you in their embrace. Alright, I think that's all I'm gonna do with him. Um, basically the item that I got, um, the blue seal, it increases your health. Not by a lot, but at least something, so... I'll put it on just to have it. Alright, next area I'm gonna go to is, um, I'm gonna head to the armor shop. Well, first I should head here to show you this guy. Who are you? Oh, it doesn't matter. Just help me open this door. I packed my tools in here, seeing it was vacant. But now somebody's gone and locked the door. Okay, basically this is the blacksmith, but you can't access him yet because you need to get his key. You won't be able to get his key until the Forest of Fallen Giants, which is actually the first area we're going to go to. Now the next place we're going to go to is over here to uh, this guy's shop. Uh, oh. oh hello there. I don't know, I like to arrange myself. Welcome to my uh, shop. I'm Morlin, and I, well, I sell armor. Oh, sorry, I... Please do have a look at my wares. I could really use the business. If you'd be so kind. Okay, so basically this is the armor shop. You can basically buy, like, armors and stuff like that here. He doesn't really have anything I want, to be honest. I'm just gonna... I think I'm just gonna pass for now, so... I'm gonna leave... I'm gonna... You know, I should talk to him. Let's talk to him for a second. I came from the west. From Volgan. Have you been there? It's a lively place, vibrant with trade. Very competitive, of course. And you, you have to grease the wheels to get anywhere. But I didn't have the funding for that, so I left home in hopes of striking gold. It's been years since then, and I've... <laughs> well, I've made very little headway. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm still here. Everything's all run down and dying. It's t terrible for business, really. So pretty much, you already got his story. He's from uh, Volgan, which is supposed to be a far-off land. Basically, his shop improves when you buy stuff from him. I believe when you spend about a thousand souls, he improves his stock. Oh yeah, look at this, guys. A cat. I'm not kidding. A cat. Oh, I'm dead, are we? Yeah, she talks. And one without much time remaining. Just about ready to fall apart, I'd say. Not exactly the time to be chatting with a cat. <laughs> no? Well, suit yourself. Oh yes, you may call me Shalqua. Enchante. So, what did you want, anyway? Ooh, you smell wonderful. <laughs> Basically, this cat, Shalquar, has a thing for undeads. Like, she likes the smell of them. Now, some of these items are pretty useful for later. The Ring of Evil Eye, I wouldn't recommend because you'll get a better version later. This is a very useful item. I could recommend getting this. The red eye ring, um, it's easier to be detected by enemies. I can see some use out of it, plus it has a, a really funny use. The name engraved ring is actually good for co-op, and this can help you hear whispers, which is good for enemies. It'll usually make a noise when you're nearby by an enemy. Of course, you can buy a few items here, but nothing else I want. You can also check your standing in each covenant if you want to from her, or you can abandon the covenant. Let's talk to her. This place is already dead. Everything will crumble and waste away so that something new may be born. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Not really. Alright, I'm out of here. Oh my. 
Okay, so there's one more area I want to show you before I head off. Okay, right here leads to Hyde's Tower of Flame, which is a pretty good place for leveling up. I won't lie on that one. But I'm not heading that way yet. I'm going to head through uh, the, forest of the, the um, forest of the Fallen Giants. Up here is something I definitely want to show ya. Of course you get some homer bones here, but right here is something I want to show ya. Victor's Stone is basically a place where you can join another covenant. See, this will set you upon an, ar an arduous path, okay, to join this covenant. Now, I'm not going to join it, but basically what this is, this is the Covenant of Champions. Basically what this covenant does is that it increases the difficulty of the game, but for no significant reward. So if you want to just make the game tougher for you, there you go. You can join that covenant, and it'll basically put the game into a harder setting. But that is completely up to you if you want to do that. You don't have to join that covenant if you don't want to. And that's being honest, which I do like. They give you the option at least to join the covenant or not. So pretty much we've done our tour of uh, Majula. Um, there is one other location I'm going to go to real quick. Right here, you won't be able to access this until after you've gone through the Forest of the Fallen Giants. Right over here is uh, some weird pig-like enemies. Like, there's these weird pig-like enemies. A couple of Dark Souls players have speculated that this is a, uh, an, uh, a I guess the best word is homage to Epic Name Bro. If you don't know, uh, Epic Name Bro along with a German spy did the, uh, the strategy guide for this game with Future Press. Now I don't know if, uh, if that's really, a, if that's really a, uh, an homage to Epic Name Bro. I could be wrong, but a couple of Dark Souls players have speculated on that. Now I don't know this to be fact, so don't like you know don't take my word as like you know the complete and honest truth because I honestly don't know. Give me like I honestly don't know, so don't take my word for it because I really don't know. All right then, so before um we uh, do anything else, um I think we're done with Majula in most cases. I think we're done with Majula. So now I'm going to uh, try to get through here as quick as I can because I'm running out of time on my video. So basically this door right here that I'm opening leads to the, uh, the forest of the fallen giants if I'm saying it correctly. I'm going to switch my uh, dex weapon. I'm going to switch to my scimitar. Alright, right here is a... Uh, I think I could drop down safely without killing myself. I really hope so. Yes, I can. Grab the item here. And we get a human effigy. Now, I'm going to try to make this jump. Hopefully I don't die. Oh, good one. Alright, got a few items there. And here we are. Forest of Fallen Giant. This is it. This is the first area, basically, of the game. This is actually the first recommended area of the game. So, really, you can come here if you want to, or you can go elsewhere. A lot of people recommend going through Hyde's Tower of Flame because you can level up easily there. Which, I do agree with. You can level up very easily there. But it's completely up to you if you want to go that way. Of course, we have a few enemies to deal with. I'm just gonna kill these enemies just to show you what I'm capable of. Ow. Hold on, there's one enemy over here that I need to deal with. Damn it. Ran out of stamina. Alright, one more enemy. Oh, that was a cool run. I didn't know that was the run attack for the scimitar. Alright, that enemy right there is uh, playing dead, basically, as you can see. And now he's dead for real. Hollow Infantry Helm. No, nah, I'm not going to use that. And we have a Soul of a Lost Undead. So that's pretty much all there is in this place. Over here is a bonfire where you can, uh, you know, where you can get your strength back. Now, I'm going to say this. I want to say this before um, I continue. Basically, um, basically, enemies have a certain amount of respawns. I think like certain enemies have about 12 respawns before they stop respawning entirely. So basically, farming in certain areas is a little tougher because 
once you've exhausted that area, you won't see any more enemies there. So you'll have to be careful. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to be enough for now. So until next time, I'm Keenan 47 aka Wolfkeen. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, guys, bye, everybody.